Hi, this is Stephanie Miller from The Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from my show on Political Voices Network. Oh, she's so soothing. Oh, please, can I have some more? Please, please, please. So I entered a motion to vacate, but I didn't call it for a vote. I was controlled. I was responsible. Huh. I was being <laughs> conscious and, and, and caring about my conference and our majority. It was a warning to stop serving the Democrats and support our Republican conference and support our agenda. And he didn't do it. Aww, I'll continue to torture you with the sibling S yapping Pomeranians. Sounds like Walter to me. I just can't. I can't. I just, I. No, Walter's cute. Okay. Stop, it. Stop interrupting me. Okay. Oh, oh, I got a hate letter. Bill in Tampa. Uh, Dear Mama, how dare you say Lauren Bobert is useless? She is perfectly useful at pro- providing public handy jays in front of kids while letting you simultaneously play with her hooters. She's also great at providing examples of Republican hypocrisy, and there's no one better at providing comic relief for humiliating themselves in public, with the possible exception of Marjorie Three Toes Taylor. She has a use. Yes, she does. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is a nice one. Oh, Dana, are you getting? I'm get. I just get. I'm getting the best hate mail lately. Uh, Hal says, uh, "Please remember to have someone record you being stoned to death when you go to Gaza and tell them you're gay." Best. Oh, best regards. That was nice. That Hal. Was sweet. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's fantastic. Thank you, Hal. Okay. That <laughs> has nothing to do with getting aid, uh, food, and and medicine to. Sick and hungry children in Gaza. Right. That has nothing to do with it. I hate everyone. Hi, good one, except for Dana Goldberg. Hi, Dana. Hi, and I, you know, I've stayed quiet on this, and I, it's hard not to listen. We all want this conflict to end. Yeah. I just would like the same empathy from both sides yep. for the other people yes. that are hurting. If yeah. you're going to say free Palestine, I want you to also free the hostages that Hamas is holding. Exactly. If you're going to say Israel should be. You know, we have a we have a right to live there in a state. So do the Palestinians in that right. area. They do like they're. Right. So I just that's my frustration, especially as a Jewish woman. I have so much empathy. I want this genocide to end. I also want the hostages released, and I want Hamas to surrender. Yeah. Both of those things can be true at the same time. I think it was the doc last segment. Even though it was about the bird flu, we can chew a whole lot of gum and walk at the same time. And the lack of empathy on either side is what's going to keep this conflict going. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, You know, sadly, Dana, as you say that, I'm feeling like that's what's happening here. It's a perfect example of how you get what's happening in the Middle East. It's just escalating. Yeah. It's escalating. Yeah. Both sides are escalating. And it, it, it's just, I just am. And it is yeah. not a coincidence. It's just not. No. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The founders could not have imagined just a another party in the United States that has just decided to be Trump's defense team, right? Like yeah. House Republican Conference Chair Elise Stefanik filed an ethics complaint against Jack Smith, <laughs> right? Accusing him of illegal in- election interference. She argues that Smith violated federal prosecution policy by trying to ask the Supreme Court for an expedited review of Trump's immunity claims uh, in a, uh, a bid to prevent Trump from stalling the trial until after the election. I mean, I... This clearly she's like, oh, well, Christy Noem's out. That moves me up on the, on the VP list. So let me do this ridiculous thing. Right. They're just all gross. I mean, the boot licking. I, I would I, now. I mean, literally, if Trump turned to DeSantis and was like, do you want to be my VP? He would absolutely say yes, yes. even though he was like, you can't kiss the ring. If you kiss the ring, you know, blah, blah, blah. He would shove the ring right up his own ass and be his VP pick if he if he had to. <laughs> Marine Atlanta, our uh, prosecutor until Bonnie Willis is available, and then we're going to drop you like a bad habit. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Um, yeah, Trump complaining about the courtroom being too cold. Is that idiot too stupid to figure out to wear layers for warmth? I mean, right. Just start with My that. mom would say, put um, on a sweater. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yes. But, you know, we will. he will enjoy the southern hospitality of the Fulton County Courthouse's old, creaky AC system. Ooh, yes. Make him feel like That's what we were saying. In- to kill a mockingbird hot. <laughs> make, it, make it a sauna, Funny Willis. Yes! <laughs> we have just the right environment waiting for him, and I'm sure we can treat him like a black person in the 1950s, like the people of the jury in To Kill a Mockingbird exactly. who had to sit up in the balcony. Make him bust up a uh, sugar But, you know, road. that would punish... Do you know where I can get a good blow? By the way, where can I get a good blowout in Atlanta that will survive the humidity? (laughs) When is that? Oh, it's Um, in July. I will. 
I'll send that to Jody. Oh, yeah. Atlanta in July? <laughs> oh, great. Good luck. Wow. <laughs> that was like that Miami bookstore yeah. event I did in August. Uh-huh. Yikes. <laughs> You need to fire your tour manager for that one, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you some resources about that. All right, thank um, you. But, but yeah, I mean, we, 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 can, we can treat him to a nice hot courtroom down here, but that would punish the jury for having to be in the same room with him. Oh, and remember, can you, oh, can you imagine the, the farts and the diapy smell? Oh, That's oh. exactly my point. The cold probably keeps the fart stink down. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We started this segment with a pecker joke and ended with a fart joke. There's less festering. Uh, Chris Lavoy, who uh -oh. said, "Yes, we are passing the Democratic agenda each and every day that we're here. We have a slim majority in the House and everything that's being passed overwhelmingly with Democrats' support. So it makes no difference to me if it's Hakeem Jeffries as Speaker or Mike Johnson right now. Uh, Marshall, Will, and Holly on a routine expedition. No, <laughs> Lauren Boebert. Oh. See, you thought I was going to say Marjorie Taylor Greene, but I didn't. Okay. All right, Chris, who said, of Marjorie Taylor Greene, no one's ever accused her of being a four-dimensional chess player. She has a goldfish memory and lives in the moment. She's just a creature of the internet age. Chaka. No. Oh, oh that's that a good guess, Conservative Jonah Goldberg. Oh. Fight, 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 Dana. Big bag of rats on their side. Love it. Yeah. I love it. There's yeah. moderate Republicans, and I think if this gets worse before it gets better, they're going to tap out and burn the place down on their way out. Yeah, they will. I would love to see it. Because <laughs> I keep saying, read the Time magazine interview uh, it is horrifying. just chilling horrifying right i we covered a lot of it yesterday but uh, trump said he wouldn't dismiss of course the prospect of violence by his supporters in the 2024 election if we don't win you know it depends he said it always depends on the fairness of the election uh, he said, uh, I think the enemy from within, in many cases, is much more dangerous for our country than the outside enemies of China, Russia, and various others. That That's that's where we are. Yep. Uh, Putin's yeah. his friend, and other Americans are his enemy. Yep. And, and Anytime it comes out of Trump's mouth that what's happening in here is more dangerous than Putin or more dangerous than Russia, we know who's giving him talking points every time. Yeah. That should not come out of any president's mouth in the United States and of America. Can I just say again, speaking of, I've said this before on the show today, he would have already sent in the National Guard to campuses and there would yeah. be dead kids. I'm telling you right now. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Trump came as close as he ever has to outright saying he would try to get President Biden thrown in prison if he wins another term. Uh, he said, uh, yeah, Biden, he vowed Biden will face charges if the Supreme Court doesn't grant his demands for total immunity. Uh, he said, if they said a president doesn't get immunity, then Biden, I'm sure, will be prosecuted for all his crimes, Trump explained. Yep. He and again, what we overlook is he did try to uh, lock her up. He did try to yes. prosecute Hillary Clinton. But that was a bridge too far even for Bill Barr because she didn't do anything. You'd have to manufacture evidence, right? Yeah, Bill's really amazing in the fact that he's a horrible human being, has no scruples, is a piece of sh uh, crap. Oh! I didn't say it. Okay. A, piece of, a piece of crap. Thank you. It Shut was just the a, front door. <laughs> yep, it's a piece of crap, but knows not to break the law. Like he knows yeah. the law like the back of his hand. He will push it right up to the limit and then he will back away. Uh, he, Trump says he thinks white Americans are facing discrimination and that no. can't be allowed. He was asked about polls showing uh, his supporters believe that anti-white racism is now a greater problem than prejudice level against uh, other minorities. He said there's a definite anti-white feeling in this country and that can't be allowed either. Oh my God. Oh my God. I mean, he is running as a white supremacist, Dana, period. He absolutely is. And when you look at the caliber of people that think they're supreme, <laughs> yeah. Ay, ay, ay. right <laughs> hiring in the u.s private sector cooled in april but job growth was still higher than anticipated boosted by the services sector uh i mean i you know Dana, here's the thing i keep saying they keep allowing republicans to do interviews where they talk about how much better the economy was under trump even though that is so provably statistically untrue and then they do a poll on cue where they go oh people the majority of people think the economy was better under trump I mean, how, how do you combat that? Well, unfortunately, it's almost impossible to because he inherited an economy from Obama that kept getting better and better during the first year of his presidency because of things that were set up during the, uh, the Obama administration. Right. So it's, it's just it's a factual thing that it's very hard for a lot of people to understand 
how civics work in this country and what the butterfly effect is of things that will happen during Biden's administration that are going to affect the next and, and so on and so forth. But they don't know. They just see whoever's yeah. in there. Oh, gas prices are high. It must be this president. Gas prices are low. Yeah. The president doesn't control the gas prices. He's nothing to do and with it. And by the way, the gas prices are going to get higher because yeah. Netanyahu and MBS and Putin really, really, really want Trump back in office. 100 percent. And so, yeah, I mean, this is, you know, part of the cycle we're in. Uh, a majority of voters are extremely or very concerned about the media pushing misinformation about the upcoming uh, uh, at presidential election, a new poll found. Uh, 53% of Americans extremely are very concerned about media outlets spreading inaccurate information or disinformation. Um, I mean, we were saying we're so unused to journalism that when Caitlin Collins pushes back on a J.D. Vance, you know, obvious hypocrisy, we're like, oh, <laughs> we stand up and we applaud when that's what every journalist, real journalist, should be doing in this country. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's like all of the facts are on our side. And when people go like, oh, you know, like Katie Turr tried to get away with, you know, oh, well, there was a pandemic. It's like, no, no. First of all, yes, you absolutely can blame the pandemic yeah. on him. And secondly, yep. the response to the pandemic is what made everything worse. You know, she, absolutely. Yeah, I he love didn't that. want to look like a failure. And so he let a million people die. I, th I love that they, everyone said Nancy Pelosi stuffed Katie Turr in a locker. <laughs> watch, watch that to know how to handle yeah, the media. Yeah, Nancy absolutely. Pelosi gives a master class every time she's on. She just does not take any, nope. you know. No guff. No guff is yes, taken. Yes, yes. A woman of her age takes no guff. Listen, DG Comedy takes no guff, and she fights for democracy every single day, people. DG Comedy, follow her, go see her live. And we love you, Dana Goldberg. You are invited to Stephanie Miller's Sexy Liberal Save the World Tour. It's the political comedy event of the year, and it's coming to a city near you. Join Stephanie Miller, the queen of progressive talk radio, along with Hal Sparks, John Fugelsang, and the comedy duo Frangela, mocking all the fascists and trolls for a tour that is hilarious, inspiring, and deeply offensive to just the right people. It's an all-new tour with all-new guests and a side-splitting evening of stand-up. Stephanie Miller's Sexy Liberal Save the World Tour.